Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Probable cause determined for Air Age of Flight 8501 loss. Boeing getting set to roll out their 737 MAX. From England to Darwin, Australia in a 70 mile per hour biplane. I'm Brie Cross, it's December 2nd, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. We are now receiving reports from several sources that Indonesia's National Transportation Safety Committee is releasing information regarding its findings on the loss of Air Asia Flight 8501 on December 28th of last year. The aircraft crashed into the ocean off the coast of Borneo Island while en route to Singapore. The report indicates that malfunctions took place in a computer system affecting control of the rudder. It appears from the reports that the crew took inappropriate actions in an attempt to resolve the problem when they pulled and reset a cockpit circuit breaker. This caused the automatic flight control system to disengage, leading to the loss of control of the aircraft by the cockpit crew. The resetting of the circuit breaker is not an approved procedure for addressing the malfunctioning rudder control system. Ultimately, the aircraft stalled at high altitude and the crew was unable to regain control of the aircraft prior to impact. The report is lengthy and addresses other crew-related issues, but it leads to the concern that pilots are not being adequately trained to manually control the aircraft in unusual attitude conditions without automatic flight systems being engaged. The public will get its first look at a Boeing 737 MAX airplane on December 8th, marking a significant milestone towards the onset of flight testing. If that flight testing goes well, delivery to launch customer Southwest Airlines is planned for the third quarter of 2017. Southwest has a large number of 737 MAX airplanes on order from Boeing. It's reported that Boeing had originally planned to deliver the first 737 MAX in 2019, but is now looking at putting the airplane into service nearly two years ahead of that original schedule. Boeing has opened a third production line to accommodate the orders it has for the 737 MAX, which is an extension of the venerable model 737 that first entered airline service in 1968. After the break, a Tiger Moth heads from England to Australia. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. No woman has attempted to fly a tiger moth from England to Australia since Amy Johnson's epic flight in 1930, but that is about to change. This month, Captain Amanda Harrison will lift off from Duxford Imperial War Museum in Cambridgeshire and head for Darwin 9,735 miles away. Trig Avionics is supporting her trip, and her airplane has been equipped with a Trig radio and transponder. Harrison said, quote, Amy Johnson remains my inspiration, and as a female pilot, I want to inspire others to fly. Aviation has genuinely transformed my life. It forces you to face your fears and conquer them in such a positive way. Harrison added, I expect to face many practical issues, but like Amy, I'm determined to make it to Darwin, end quote. She will make the trip in 25 stages, maintaining and servicing her Gypsy Miner engine alone. Harrison is raising funds to support her flight through crowdsourcing and hopes many fellow pilots will donate and help her along her way. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, Sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. In 
In this video, the EAA seaplane base during Air Venture is described as, quote, a yoga class in the middle of a rock concert. It's a place to sit in the grass, relax, and enjoy the sounds of splashing water as the seaplanes gracefully taxi by. Search EAA Seaplane Base 2009 on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, Clinton, Arkansas to get Class E airspace. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has posted an NPRM in the Federal Register proposing the establishment of Class E airspace at Clinton, Arkansas. The FAA says that controlled airspace is necessary to accommodate new standard instrument approach procedures developed at Clinton Municipal Airport. The Airline Consumer Group Flyers Rights has petitioned the FAA to set minimum standards for the size of seats on airliners. The group says its concern is the evacuation of an airliner in the event of an emergency. One of Sikorsky Airport's two runways is being closed for the winter, pending an FAA review of operations at the facility. The Stratford Connecticut Airport is still working to complete a long-delayed runway safety upgrade that was mandated following an accident in 1994. Students at Jacksonville University in Northeast Florida have turned to the crowdfunding site Experiment.com to obtain funding for a project that would use UAVs. They are working with the Marine Science Research Institute to study oyster reefs in the St. John's River. The final Boeing C-17 Globemaster III military airlifter at the company's plant in Long Beach, California departed on November 29th, marking the official end of aircraft production in Long Beach. Boeing will continue providing support, maintenance and upgrades to the worldwide C-17 fleet. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. In an initiative to strengthen the relationship between aviation medical examiners and pilots, three European associations have issued their joint approach to medical and mental fitness assessments of pilots. It endorses a key set of guidelines developed by the Aerospace Medical Association. In their joint statement, the three organizations stress that safe pilot performance during an entire career should be the common aim of professional pilots, aeromedical and aviation psychological specialists, airline managers and authorities alike. Captain Dirk Poleksik, president of the European Cockpit Association, said in part, quote, high workload, pilot fatigue, and atypical employment forms like zero hours contracts, self-employment or temporary contracts become more common in our industry and put a lot of pressure on pilots both physically and mentally. In a project known as Fly Safe, Fly Well, they seek to strengthen the role of prevention in aeromedical assessment, particularly in psychological aspects of the pilot's health. They express a desire to address the issues of mental health while minimizing its effects on the pilot's career. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.